You're watching News Made Easy. I'm Anandya Chakravarti. India's central bank, the RBI, has increased its signal interest rates, uh, which kind of sets the floor for interest rates in the entire economy in the banking system. Now, depending on what you do and where you are, it'll be good or bad news for you. If you're one of those people who's got almost all its savings, his or her savings, in uh, a bank deposit, then this is good news for you. On the other hand, if you have taken a home loan on a floating interest rate, then the number of EMIs that you'll pay will increase because interest rates will go up. If you were planning to buy a car, upgrade a car, and you wanted to buy it in, on EMI and you thought, okay, this EMI is within my reach and I'll buy it, I'll be able to pay it off. And now suddenly you get a call from the bank and they say, no, the, number, the EMI is actually going to go up or you have to extend the time period, you decide which one you want to do and you say, okay, I'm going to postpone that decision. I'm going to buy it later. And if you are a small or medium-sized business or a large business, your cost of financing is going to go up, which means that uh, your working capital requirements, the money that you need for everyday use, production, uh, for paying wages, buying raw materials, administrative costs, that cost is going to go up because businesses run on borrowing money and then paying it back there's a constant back and forth that takes place in the system and of course if you wanted to buy a new machine if you wanted to uh, set up a new factory if you wanted to upgrade your office you would have gone and borrowed money uh, that all of that is going to become more expensive now why has the rbi done that um, uh, it's pretty simple. The reason that everyone's talking about is inflation. We have runaway inflation in India and generally it is believed in textbook economics that if inflation goes up, then the best way to bring it down is to increase interest rates. Now, how can you do that? That's a bit odd. You think that what has interest rates got to do with inflation? Uh, again, the explanation is pretty simple. Well, let's say, as I said, that the car buyer, the uh, business owner who was going to expand they're all going to postpone their decisions or re not expand in the way they were going to right so the amount that they were going to spend in the market is going to reduce the business owner is not going to buy a machine or increase raw material expenditure the car buyer is postponing the decision to buy so the demand the total demand in the market reduces and if the demand reduces what happens that prices the supply remaining the same prices will drop right that's the first the second reason that it is believed that when an economy is uh, on at working at full employment or very high employment level what happens is that let's say that a business a particular company wants to produce more to produce more it can buy more raw materials but what happens about labor Everyone is employed, so what does it have to do? It has to poach from somewhere else, right? And it will have to pay more wages. And those who want to hold on to their workers from going to another company, they'll have to raise the wages as well. When wages rise, not just, not do just the costs of those companies increase, but also another thing happens. There's more money in the hands of workers, so they spend more, production levels are more or less the same, so prices go up. In the long run, of course, uh, supply will end up matching demand in the mainstream theory but in the short term prices go up so what do you do you curtail that by reducing investments so if someone wanted to borrow money and invest and increase the demand for labor you stop that if uh, uh, companies which were borrowing heavily and expanding have to shut down because you've increased interest rates well that's it so there's a trade-off in mainstream econom economics which is believed that there is a point at which there is an optimization of employment where inflation is tolerable right people want that inflation uh, beyond that when inflation goes up you have to reduce employment there's no other thing that you can do now they're very simple ideas and because they're so simple uh, they're wrong let us be very clear they're wrong all the evidence that has come from across the world over the last so many years since the 80s has proved that this is wrong. This correlation between interest rates, inflation and employment simply does not exist. It is very simple. It is wrong. It is now accepted by big bankers, by central bankers all over the world that this monetarist theory, which had become a dogma across the world and continues to be a dogma in India, by the way, where the rest of the world is giving it up, is uh, wrong and it doesn't work in that way. 
Uh, in any case, we set that aside. Just think of India's inflation. In India, inflation is being caused mainly by uh, two or three things. Number one, the cost of fuel, petrol and diesel. We, we can't control that. We buy most of our petrol and diesel from outside the global market. 85% of our crude, not petrol and diesel, comes from there, gets refined. And then there's a protection given to refineries. No amount of uh, uh, interest rate hikes is going to change that. There is uh, taxes being taken by governments, uh, centre and states. That's not going to change. So increasing interest rates is not going to make people consume less and bring prices down of petrol and diesel. Because in a sense, they are controlled and administered prices. They depend on the international trade parity prices. There's nothing the central bank can do about it. Number two, food prices. Does anyone borrow to buy food? Yes, they do, but they don't borrow it from banks. They borrow, if poor people borrow to buy food or get food, then they have to pay interest rates which have nothing to do with the formal banking system, right? Yes, there is a way in which one could argue that interest rates do affect food prices is when big traders, big uh, farmers, they borrow and then buy up all the grain in the market, all the pulses in the market and store it and wait for prices to rise or export it. So when you make it tougher for them to borrow money and their cost of finance reduces, they will have to sell off some of the grain that they've stored and hoarded and that will bring down prices. But right now, that cannot be done by cutting interest rates. That's just something that the government can do without increasing interest rates, right? The government can crack down on this. The government can do things directly without the RBI having to intervene there. So all these things, whether it is food prices, whether it is uh, the cost of petrol and diesel and whether it is inputs which are dependent on the global commodity prices, none of these can be controlled by increasing or reducing interest rates, right? The only thing that the RBI could possibly achieve by increasing interest rate is to reduce the exodus of foreign capital. It doesn't want to make the rupee more and more weak. It is, as you know, the weakest as it has ever been against the dollar. And the dollar is likely to be strengthening over the next few uh, months because the interest rates in the US are going to go up. And you'll ask, why should that matter? Well, in the, U the dollar is the global store of currency. And if in the US interest rates go up and you can earn, let's say, 2.5-3% return on dollar, it is probably better than a 6% return on uh, rupee because it is much more volatile. The rupee can weaken and also well the markets can fluctuate and you can lose some money so to make that differential in interest rate the same the rbi actually increased its uh, rates just ahead of the what it thought the the us fed would do right so the only reason could be to keep the do rupee stable against the dollar and there's something to say about that simply because uh, we are net importers we import a lot and our exports might be boosted a little bit here and there if our rupee weakens, but it's not, not actually that price uh, elastic that it'll suddenly will uh, take over the global market if the rupee weakens. That's not going to happen, right? So uh, since we import more than we export, a weak rupee is bad for us and therefore the RBI might be uh, within its rights to do that. But we really don't know why it's been done. In, uh, um, there's not been much clarity, not much commentary from the RBI and neither from the government, which claims to be maintaining a distance from the RBI, of course. But we'll have to wait and see what the RBI comes out to say and why it has done it and whether there'll be more over the next few months. That's the show today. Keep watching News Click. Subscribe to our channel, like us and share our video as well.